Welcome back everybody. In this next video series, we're going to take a look at more of the intermediate to advanced commands within Civil 3D, how to leverage your drawings, how to pull more data, how to make more things automatic, and get into uh, the advanced, some of the advanced commands. This very first video, we're going to keep it nice and simple, uh, simple in an advanced world here, but we're going to look at fields and we're going to look at pulling information from your drawing automatically. We could pull information on lines and polylines and circles. And now this is not civil 3D based information. This is uh, just a sim simple information that it does update when you save or regen, uh, flip through tabs. And it, it, it can give you some, some very simple, simple related information. And it's really good for title blocks as well. If I take a quick look at one of my title blocks, I have a field on the left that uh, we're going to be taking a look at fields this drawing. I have a field on the left that displays the date, the time, and where the drawing is saved. And we could also have it pull uh, information from, from our viewport tabs. We can insert a field to automatically populate our drawing number, whatever saved down here. We can do some, some information with uh, revisions and whatnot. But we're going we're gonna to take a look at fields within objects. So I'm going to just put in a piece of M text and I'm going to place it in the center of this circle here. This will open up your M text editing window. If you do not have this dialog box, you should be able to open it up through editor settings and it's the show toolbar. So right click on that editor settings, show toolbar. I like to have the toolbar up instead of trying to go up to the ribbon here. However, we want to right click and insert a field. It'll bring up our field dialog box and under the category, there's a number of categories of items we can bring in. We can select a database, project related information, date and time. This is a good one, you, uh, the drawing create date, the current date, what date the drawing is plotted, and what uh, date the drawing is last saved. So if we select any one of these and we can have, we have a number of different formats here. So I can display it as month, day, year as, as numbers, day, month, uh, day of the week, month, day, year as text, any, any option here we can select. We can also do the time. So it'll be the current time, what time really the drawing is created at. So if I started the drawing right now, it is 9.55, 9.56 a.m. That is the date or the time that I created this drawing. So if I had to purely select the 9.55 and hit OK, we see a different piece of information on here because I actually started this drawing at 9.49 a.m. If we insert another field, maybe the uh, day of the month, day, month, year, and we can space them apart. So 9.49 a.m. on November 5th, 2020, I created this video and I started inserting these fields. Now there is a gray background on them to show you that uh, we do have a field in the drawing. The gray background, don't worry, will not print. It just lets you know that there is a field attached to this current piece of M text. And if I do a regen all, if I save the drawing, this piece of text should not update because it is set for drawing creation date. Now, if I go to the next line and we put it in another field for the save date and we will do the time and then I'm going to do the exact same. Uh, insert another field for the date format as well. So the last time I saved this drawing was at 9.57 a.m. If I save it again now, that has updated to 9.58 because it is now 9.58. So this will display the last time the drawing has been saved. A couple more items under the fields themselves, uh, plot date. This is a good one. Uh, you know, when the drawing exactly when the drawing was plotted, usually this would be placed in the side of your title block. 
You can even place it down in the, the text bits to the right of your title block to show you the currently updated dates. So that was the date and time column. Under document, this is another uh, important column that we could gather information automatically. File name. Where is your file saved? Right now it's just saved under my desktop, uh, fields.dwg. When you're in a company, knowing where drawings are saved is very important. Being able to track things down on a server that's 10, 15, 20 folders deep, pull off the file name. You could do the path only, the file name only, path and file name. Put everything as title case, display everything as uppercase or lowercase, and it would be uh, it'll it'll make it display as you had want there. File size, if you want to put the file size on there, I've never had it, I've never done this before. We can put a hyperlink, and that's more under the links section. We can put hyperlinks in our drawing. Last save by. So who was the last drawing to, or who was the last person to open this drawing, save it, and even the last person to access it, we could display that. The subject and the title, I've never played with a, a lot of these options, but uh, just to show you guys that they are there. Under links, we can place hyperlinks. So we click on something and it would take us to a document on a web page or a document on a server somewhere. A, we, uh, it's a quick way of opening information from right within AutoCAD. The main place that I use to access fields, however, is under objects. When I want to get some information, instead of throwing in a civil 3D label, sometimes um, that's just not feasible. So we could do a field to pull that information from us. Uh, we can do formulas, we can do named objects when there are drawings. This mainly displays the name of the object itself. However, the object command. So under the field category objects, under object, then we have an option to select our object type. So if I click on the select object, I am able to pick uh, a large number of items within Civil 3D. I'm gonna start with this oval I have here, or this ellipse, and Civil 3D will now pop up that I can pull different properties. So I could pull the area of this ellipse. I could pull the center point. Where is the center point located? What color is it set to? So this uh, this object is on a layer that's set to by layer. Ellipses apparently have ends, uh, end angles. What layer is it on? Line type, line type scale, line weight in millimeters or inches. Major radiuses, minor radiuses, start, start angles, if it's transparent or not. T typically, it's I pull the areas or the lengths of, of objects. So if I select area, then I'm given a preview over here. So the area of this ellipse is 1,133.685 square meters. And my format, I can keep it in current unit, units. I can put a decimal, architectural, engineering, fractional, scientific. Uh, typically I'll leave, I'll select decimal so I can specify my precision and I get any options of these precisions. Usually it's just to display the meter squared completely. We have an additional formats button where we could do conversions if we want, uh, zero suppressions. If there's any leading or trailing zeros, we can, can suppress those, but I'm just going to have it display 1134 and click okay. Now I'm going to delete my date and time ones here. And typically if I'm pulling an area, I'll want to show meter squared beside it. So I'll type in an M and under the symbols, we do have a squared symbol. That's another little piece of information inside your text M text window here. So this is 11, 1134 square meters. And this functions like normal M text. We can come in here and we can type area is equal to 1134. If I now go and update this ellipse and I make it a little bit bigger, it doesn't change immediately on my screen where a civil 3D label would immediately change. If I regen, however, it will update. If you save the drawing, it will update. If you reopen the drawing, it will update. So there's a couple different ways of making it update. 
and regen and save is one of them. Let's do another piece of mtext for this line itself. So again, just a simple mtext command. I'm going to place it over top. We'll type length. And then I'll right click insert field. Alternatively, you could hit control F. So object type, I'm going to select this line and I can pull the angle, color, delta, which angle it's going at or the angle, angular difference and end point. Start point will be here as well. Uh, thickness of it, but we want the length and I'm going to leave it in current units and hit OK. And again, if I update the length of this line, it will not change the uh, location of the M text. However, it will update when I type that regen all. I do have a number of other objects in here that uh, I won't be adding fields on because there's a couple more options within the fields that we're going to take a quick look at. Oops, M text. So we have an other category. We could put list variables, we can display list variables, system variables, and say what they are. So if you have a little section in your drawing that's for list variables that, that the user could keep looking at. So the pick first, uh, that variable resetting tends to cause wonkiness within Civil 3D. Um, file DIA, at DIA, all those variables that tend to change the user experience not necessarily for the better. We could we could display some variables in a piece of mtext on the side of your drawing. Okay, something's going on. Let me go check this list. Under the plot section, we have the device name, who's currently logged into the computer, who's printing this out. So I can have it display my name, uh, the page setup name. So if we're in a drawing tab, the paper size that it was printed on. Now this is a good CYA to cover yourself as a drafter. This was printed on a size paper or ANSI A, eight and a half by 11, just your typical letter size paper. So if it gets scaled up or down, we know that that's wrong. The date is plotted. Again, all those inf piece, different pieces of information. The orientation, if it's landscape or portrait. Our drawing scale, we could have it pull off automatically and the plot style table, which CTB file or STB are you using? And then if you have a sheet set, we can pull sheet set information as well. So quite a few, uh, few pieces of information we could pull here automatically. I have used it to automatically populate my drawing names before. So if I name my drawing tab C1 or drawing number, sorry, if I name my drawing number C1, it can automatically populate into my title block. It can pull all that information just to make our lives a little bit easier. So that was a quick video on fields within Civil 3D and even uh, potentially within AutoCAD to pull information automatically and have it update automatically as well.